Welcome back to our conversation with Boston City Council, Andrea Campbell. Not Andrea, <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> right, that's right, Andrea Campbell. I beg your pardon. Thank you. Andrea, we're seeing more women of color in top political positions, at least now. We have, you're the first African-American woman to be council president. That's right. Uh, Ayanna Presley, our first That's black right. female member of Congress. Rachel Rollins, our first black female DA. What difference does that make? It makes a big difference. Um, each of us, and I counselor uh, now Congresswoman Presley always says this, you know, black women are not a monolith. We each come with our unique stories and experiences. Um, but they are unique. Um, we're not afraid to talk about race. We're not afraid to talk about racial disparities. We're not afraid to bring in our personal stories. So I often talk a lot about uh, my family's interaction with the criminal justice system, losing my twin brother who was in the custody of the Department of Correction, doesn't get adequate health care and passes away. These are unique perspectives that need to be at the table if we want to craft solutions to address longstanding problems around inequities um, for not just people of color, Everyone, you know, when systems don't work for people of color or those who are poor or vulnerable, they don't work for all of us. And I think we bring that lens to the work. I know I do. And as council president, I've been um, pushing and pushing to bring the council through a racial equity training um, and not assuming that every person doesn't want to be a part of these conversations. They do, including my incredible white male colleagues. And so we're all in this together. And so um, I think my perspective allows me to just shift the conversation a bit. Because I remember when Barack Obama was elected president and everyone celebrated, you know, we're now in a, it was said we were in a post-racial era, you know, our, our racial divisions were fundamentally behind us now that we'd elected a president of color. Well, I think we've found out in recent years that that was just a mirage. Um, uh, right. What's to prevent that same euphoria, uh, false euphoria, perhaps, from occurring again? I mean, I think we have to call that out and say, by no means are we in this post-racial um, society, as some folks want to say we are. We have a lot of work to do. When we look at the uh, folks who live in my district, predominantly district of color, Mattapan, Dorchester, and if you pull in Roxbury, um, the unemployment goes up. Access to quality schools, that is a problem. Access to good transportation to get to a good job, these folks don't have. Certain parts of Mattapan, forget good quality. That, you know, We always talk about the good quality and improving the quality of the tea. Some folks don't, folks don't have access to the tea. And so we have to be intentional about calling these issues out. And if we don't mention the word race in these conversations, we'd make a big mistake. Uh, my goal is to talk about these issues in, in a in a deep way, and also um, to talk about the history of Boston in this country, but then to say we all can play a role in crafting solutions to make a difference for these communities and for all of us. Our time is up for this conversation, but we're going to continue the conversation in greater depth on our brand new podcast. And as of the middle of next week, I invite you to check out Studio BZ, available wherever you get your podcasts, for a much more lengthy conversation between myself and the council president. Thank Andrea, you so thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for having it. me. And that's it for us. Now it's back over to my colleagues. For more WBZ News.